Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Sunwolf, and we're back with this is the police. Uh, not having a great time in this game. I am not the best police chief ever, so maybe it's good I didn't go into law enforcement. <laughs> Alright, local resident denounces mayor for theft of antique necklaces. Representative of Orthodox Church may appear in Freeburg. Freeburg authorities halt campaign citing city safety. Good, good work. Kari, best not die, everyone. I can't even you. Don't forget to prepare for the upcoming meeting with prosecutors. How am I to prepare? Take care of the hero. Linda Moser is today a hero, having pulled a drowning Senator Wallace Green from the river. The, yeah, the municipality on the Senator's recommendation has decided to reward the outstanding officer. The storm is scheduled for the 27th and the event will be open to the press, as well as Mr. Green's family. As well as Mr. Green's family, who wish to personally thank the police. Make sure nothing unusual happens to this officer. He will be able to attend the ceremony and receive his medal without complications. Alright, Moser, you ain't doing shit. What do we got? Suburbs. Attempted murder! Some deserve to arrest one or two criminals, but when you're taking down a whole group, it's better to bring a paddy wagon. A truly special staff can cope without the need of special transport, but most officers prefer a paddy wagon when the situation calls for it. Too bad the department doesn't have the money for one. Thank you. See, like, I, I think I'm making pretty decent progress in this game, but they give me shit like this, and I'm like, is... Am I still doing, like, tutorial crap? So I don't got a panty bag, so I gotta buy one. I just, the ambulance arrives. But the boy was declared dead on the scene. The nearby residents are enraged and demand just for a driver of the van. He currently holed up inside an ambulance while the paramedics try to reason with the crowd. The situation is quickly surrounded. Okay, I need a good one, so Yancey, get down there. Yeah, send... Send two. That was a mistake. No, I have no cops. I'm gonna miss a call. Ooh. I just want to sure no one dies. I can't. I don't want any more cops to die. Jack, you have something going down today. Come around to 18:30. We wouldn't want any. All right. Yeah, I need money so I can buy more upgrades and crap like that and train my officers. Oh man, I called the police station reporting that terrible screams have been coming from the sawmill all over and out. The hell is going on? What? What's a guy gotta do to get a little sleep around here? Better go check it out. All right, I'll check it out in like. 20 seconds. Ah, oh, thank god. Everything good? Alright, cool, 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 cool. Alright, now get back ASAP. I need you now. Oh, awesome. Okay. Bam, bam. Alright, three. That should be good, right? Yeah, this should be fine. This should be fine. Sand Road. Mr. Boyd, I managed to manage a large fleet of vehicles and want to organize a workshop for my new drivers. They'll have to learn how to behave on the road, so your patrolman will never even need to look twice at our cars. <laughs> oh, I got sneeze. Ah, oh, sneeze, come on. Dang. Okay. Please send three of your best officers. They'll ride all day with my people and explain intricacies of traffic load mode. Alright, I mean, I would if I could, but I kind of can't right now. Sorry, dude. Kind of don't have officers to give anyone. I want to give you all my best. Ugh, said my my job's gonna suffer. Drugstore Robert. Emergency comes received from an all night drugstore. An addict is attempted to gain unlawful entry. He violently turned the female pharmacist van. She opened the cabinets. Fuck. My professor gets a lot from the shots. Ram to give gave the police cruiser. Break the gate open, dude. A man saying, young boy with a circle saw the man is screaming hysterically. Take him and shoot to kill. Pounce on curl, raise got the man, and shoot to kill. You fucking retards. Ah. Uh. Sorry, Sans, I cannot afford right now. I need to get my best officers here because people are freaking stupid. So let's shoot the guy, not the freaking kid. You killed a kid! Emergency medical service arrived on a call for a man complaining of chest pains while they were thre uh, threatening, while they were treating him. The man suddenly attacked one of the EMTs, shouting wildly about the global pharmaceutical conspiracy. The other person managed to escape and called the police. Are, are, are the other cops coming back? Alright, good, good. Alright, we're good. Nancy? Uh, no, not pretty. Kochi? Subaki and Asana. There. Uh, 
are my cops so bad sometimes? Thank you. Civilians? Perfect. Thank you. You the best. Thank you for doing my answers. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I don't... I don't care. I, I don't care. The red department is locked inside and unsubscribed screens can be heard of them. Enter adjoining apartment. Climb over the valley. Break down the door. The victim is bound and lying on the floor. They stand, stand on top of him, waving a syringe full of an unknown substance. A bottle of bleach is on the floor nearby. The man jumps up and grabs some papers and tables. Everything is written down right here. All the evidence you need. They created these medications to control our minds. Well, the fear of police will begin if they surprise. Let's talk down at the station. Yes! Oh, good job, guys. Thank God. Where's the boy? Why did you send your office? Uh... Um, freaking A. We received those complaints. In your opinion, do any of the prisoners at the protest pose an actual danger to others? It's hard to say. Mr. Boyd, you're married, are you not? Why? What are your personal one? Good. Prisoner force. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Play in City Hall. Whoops, I done goofed. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Oh, God. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. <laughs> and to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. Oh, if your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time, I only got up to 60. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. Oh. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. Oh, this asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere. And with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. Damn. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, he'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. Well, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, 
With the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. <laughs> oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around. But I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. <laughs> This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. That's horrible. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. Oh, crap. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. Oh, jeez. Orthodox priest, prize mayor, Greek priest to be appointed head of the Freeburg Orthodox Church. Student volunteer to help farmers. Okay, that's cool. My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vickers was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, <laughs> it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? <laughs> nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real. The sound of the engine was real. The dust was real enough, too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The Sand family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. Hm. I guess I'm just lucky. We're unlucky. I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. 
Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half-dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it. Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. It took ever so long. But now I'm older. I've developed a new talent. Well, what talent is that? Patience. The will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. To get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you decided to just become the foliage. You turned yourself into a bush. Surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kendrick, but it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. <laughs> What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and oh, I'm obliged to answer. So, we're talking about Varga now. I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose. Hell, I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation penned in my own hand and written on some very expensive paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. Huh. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sand. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just... Think about our conversation. Think about it. And call me. Oh, man. I don't like this. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under, concerns is all I got. Shit, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Um... Frick. I mean, sand is super powerful. Varga is unpredictable. They're both powerful. San has a sense of honor. He's he at least seems intellectual. Ah, oh, frickin' a. 
I'm gonna go with Simmons. Tell him it's Boyd. My father got drunk and beat my mother again. This time looks pretty bad. I like to go, go to the piano. Mm, just but commit tomorrow. Ah, uh, Sands, I keep, can't keep letting you go. Why do I only have three cops? Whoa, 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 whoa. Training? Are you kidding me? Because of the training? I didn't know. Fuck. Oh, I am screwed at the end. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I have no one. I know I should. I should send SWAT. Why did I send SWAT? Why? Why did you guys tell me to send SWAT? What should we, I can't. I can't afford it. I can't. Sound like gunshots inside a church, a buried man, and a hat entered the confessional, and then a minute later, I heard a few gunshots. Then the man calmed up the booth, took off his hat, and crossed himself and sat down a pew. I think he's praying. Okay, we know he has a gun, so SWAT is definitely going. And if you need reinforcements, I will gladly send Coach and Austin as soon as they're done, and I hope they're done yet. Oh, he's not getting indoors at all. So he's gonna suck so hard. Looks like we have a situation here. The boy is struggling on the ground, barely holding off an angry dog, trying to grab him by the throat. Fire shots in there. The dog lets the boy escape and the orange starts to flee. Uh, you guys are the worst, you guys are the worst, you guys are the absolute worst. Oh, thank god. Oh. Offender cut off his hands. Loot found non automatic weapons. Officers found non automatic weapons. Crime scene. Bring to the police station. No, we don't need more our guns on the freaking road or, or streets. Are you kidding me? An ice cream vendor noticed a suspicious black bag, which has been lying on two red lamp posts past few hours. Okay, I'd love to go. Come on, other cops, please hurry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. All three. There you go. Stay back into the boss photo arms. You see, when this is a black bag, I actually thought, like, body bag. So, that's what I thought was going to be a bargain. Right, I'm going to this episode here. Uh, clearly, I'm still making some pretty stupid mistakes, or some rookie mistakes. I thought I'd better than this. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. Well, I, I know what I'm doing. Just... <sighs> this game's hard, man. It looks so easy and so, but it's hard. Like, I want my officers to do good, but they just suck sometimes. And sometimes I make the wrong decisions. So it doesn't help either way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a like. Uh, subscribe for more content. Leave a comment down below. Any tips would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you all in the next one. Later.